Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And yes, this review is a little late, but I've decided I have to do some of these Real Housewives shows two days in a row, like do them back to back. So I'm reviewing this on a Tuesday, and then I'm also going to watch The Real Housewives of New York and also review that same day. And then I think I will do um, the same thing on Thursday. So Salt Lake and um, Orange County on Thursdays. I have to divide it up. I'm still gonna do two separate. Vi I'm still gonna do separate videos, but um, either that or you are still gonna get like options where like I may not be on camera. Um, but clearly, I'm in better spirits. I'm on camera again, but that's why it's just a lot to review. But anyway, we are back. Um, this is Real Housewives of Potomac season nine, episode two, and it's called Double Trouble. And child. <laughs> I think we're in for a treat. I think this is going to be a good season. And one thing that happened this episode was Giselle got her comeuppance and she was not happy about it. She got her comeuppance. And almost to a point where I almost, a part of me almost felt bad for Giselle. And I never thought I would say that. But then I remembered all the other seasons and realized, oh, no, I don't. I kind of don't feel bad. Um, I mean, I do, but I don't. You know, me personally, I wouldn't have done what happened because it was very messy, but I'm sorry. I just feel like it's something, if, if it was on the other foot, I, I guess I would, I feel like I would expect Giselle to do the same thing. It's just someone else did this to her. And I also saw the preview for the next episode. Babe. B, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Anyway, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the episode. So this episode picked up where it left off, where Mia's in the restroom. She's crying because, you know, they're questioning how she's been handling things with Gordon and Ink. And this is at the Hattitude Party that Giselle put together. And Jack, both Jacqueline and Jazzy are consoling her in the restroom, kind of saying like, hey, don't listen to them. You're a great mom. Don't, you know, don't sweat it. And then while this is happening, we have um, Wendy, you know, with the rest of the ladies kind of caping for, well, she is caping for Mia. She was like, that was kind of a lot that y'all kind of did just now. Um, and okay, the reason why I said caping for Mia is because I'm sorry. I still want an apology. I want Mia to apologize to Wendy because the way Wendy be having your back more than she really should, you should be apologizing to her. And I, she, she, I feel like she's never really ever apologized for what she did in Miami. And I'll never forget that because you put hands on her. But anyway, um, if Wendy's forget, forgot, I guess I'm supposed to forget too. Anyway, um, or forgive. So me, so yeah, Wendy's like saying, hey, you know, that was a lot. And they're both just like, we, that wasn't really our intention to question her motherhood. It's just, it was a lot. And then, you know, Giselle explaining to the rest of the ladies, because, you know, remember, some of the ladies weren't there last season, so they don't know what this is about. And they're just like, you know, Gordon, when he was like, kind of going off and airing out their um grievances to tmz he clearly was hurt and did not like the order of how things were done and that's definitely the obvious and i just and the thing is with mia is i wish mia would just own own that and i feel like she isn't really owning that all the way but anyway so they get off of that and um before they get off of that <laughs> In the confessional, Wendy's staying like this whole Bermuda Triangle that they got going on is confusing. She's like, it's, it, it could never be me. It could also never be me either. <laughs> and then um, they do move on, though. And Giselle then um, continues handing out the hats. And she hands a bucket hat to um, Wendy. It states like, hey, our relationship has been in bucket for a minute now. But I do want to clear the air. Let's meet for lunch and do that. And so Wendy then puts on the hat. And she kind of looks like she's a rapper. Starts rapping. She's like, and then she's like, everyone wants to touch my breast. And everyone's like, no. 
And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> I'm sorry for those. Wendy always looks like a snack to me. That's just me. I'm just always like, oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, anyway, <laughs> not me lusting over her. I'm not lusting. I just I just know she's a, she's a very attractive woman. Let's just say that. Anyway. So Giselle does state that she's excited to clear the air. And um, but then next um, she presents the rest of the ladies who are newer, including Jacqueline Derby hats. Because she's like, this is a horse show. So, and so that's kind of how they end that. And then Mia does come back. They both do apologize to, so Wendy, not Wendy, um, Karen and Giselle. Giselle apologizes first and then Karen apologizes to Mia. Basically reiterating, hey, this was not our intention to question your motherhood. You're a great mother. And then they just kind of dropped it. But then Mia's clearly still bothered. But at the end of all this, this was clearly Giselle's way, pardon me, way of trying to get, you know, um, Karen, like Karen's tea out there, interrogation, if you will. And it fell flat because one thing that Karen does very well is deflect and I will say this in all seriousness, because I do not like how Karen's handling this whole situation, but I do understand why she does not want to really be vulnerable and be, you know, saying what's on her mind with these women, because half, none of these women are her friends, you know, um, maybe Kiana, but Kiana wasn't even there. Oh, and by the way, we do find out about all that too, but, um, yeah, so there's like, just kind of like, uh. A thing where yeah I think Karen would be truthful and maybe even show um, vulnerability and even accountability to you know people who she feels like are her friends but she doesn't think these people are friends because they're not especially we find out that Karen felt a way about one person in particular in this scene but anyway moving on so next we do have this mini montage and the, you know, typical housewives montage where we have Ray making Karen coffee on like this little cute espresso machine. And then we see Mia with her kids and her kids are actually adorable. But then there, from there, we do right away get the Giselle and Wendy meet up for at lunch. And Wendy is giving fashion She's wearing this feather type situation and she's looking good. Um, Giselle's just looking like Giselle because you know Giselle can't dress. That's just what it is. Um, it is kind of awkward though because they're not really friends. And um, so they decide they're going to order the food first and then try to get, you know, put, put things out there. Um, Giselle states that she is ready to listen and they do end up clearing the air. Um, the conclusion that came from this, because it was not, honestly, I thought in this scene, we were going to get more out of it than what happened. It really wasn't much to it, to be honest. Um, they both kind of just like received, received what each other was saying. Um, no apologies were ever had, which was kind of weird. Um, but they both just decided we can be cordial and move accordingly um, but we're not going to necessarily be best friends. According to Giselle, she thinks she has a best friend. But we know she was probably being facetious. She she knows she knows these women are not her friends. And also, too, I think Wendy knows what it is. Wendy's like, Giselle is going to have to make friends because she don't have her sidekick anymore. The only sidekick she has left is Ashley. And I don't know how long Ashley's going to last in that kind of role. Because, child... <laughs> Beginning of the last episode, one of the new girls is ready to take her out. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think Wendy's like, you know what? But Wendy's just a forgiving person. We know this about Wendy. So it's not shocking that Wendy will clear the air and see what happens here. But it doesn't, from what I'm seeing, um... It doesn't seem like it's happening overnight. So 
I'm not as upset as I thought was going to be about this because I was about to be like, you are betraying Candace because the ghost of Candace for me is still there because I do miss Candace. I do. Um, but I kind of don't because to a certain extent, because for one, she's expecting, she doesn't need that stress and some of the new girls got covered. <laughs> Again, I'm going to keep reiterating it. This, this next episode. I mean, this episode ended well, too, but, oh, yeah. I think we're, we're in for a good, good season. But anyway, so they, from clearing the air, they then move on to talk about the party. And Giselle asks, so what do you think about the party? You know, because Giselle's producing. You know, she's a producer of the show. Um, she is. And um, Wendy's like, yeah, I think it was a great party. Um, I don't know how I feel about the whole Mia situation. And then they both just start talking about Mia and they are shading her to death. Um, because I think, um, Wendy asked like, so, well, because Wendy said like, look, I think Mia was actually way more hurt about what you guys were saying than you realize. And, you know, Giselle's like, okay, I, I get it. I get it. And then, um, I think then also then, um, Wendy asked, um, Giselle, have you met Ink yet? And Giselle has not, but she says Karen has, but she didn't realize that, she, you know, she met him because he's so short. And then, child, that's when they're shaking him about his height. And then they brought up how they take pictures again. And <laughs> Mia, you better start taking normal pictures with your man. There's nothing wrong with dating a shorter man. I myself am also a taller woman and almost every guy I've ever dated has been shorter than me. And the last guy I dated was very much shorter than me. And I just made it work. You can, you don't have to be weird about it. It's fine. Just saying. And also too, if you're both laying down, doesn't matter. Okay. So then next we then see um, Stacy. And this is where we get to learn a lot about Stacy. And so far, I will say this. I like her. I really like her. Um, yeah, I think, you know, them switching production companies, because by the way, this is not the same production company they're using before. Thank God, because I can tell. And it's, they're doing a good job. I think they knew they had to step it up because, yeah, for obvious reasons. But anyway, Stacy's with her daughter and they're practicing Spanish together. And they're also making, um, I, I think they're making paella. Um as a part of like the Spanish class. And we learned that Stacy's original from De originally from Detroit, but she has also lived in DC. Um, where they're at right now is a DC suburb. And then she moved to Philly when she was working for QVC. And then she also does have a home in Munich. And the other thing that we find out is that her daughter is trilingual. So she knows English and then her ex-husband's, her soon-to-be ex-husband's German. So she knows German and then she knows Spanish. So, um, yeah, it seems like Stacy's a real deal when it comes to the coins. So there's that. Um, and then also her um, ex-husband is still living in the same home um, with them because they're co-parenting and they're going through deliberation and all that. Um, they do sleep in separate beds. And um, also, I think I said Isabella. Oh, man. Um, Arabella. Arabella. Ar Arabella, I think is her name. And I apologize if that's not the correct name. Um, but let me just say this. Stacy's daughter. Let's just say that. She doesn't know that her parents are going through a divorce. And she doesn't want to tell her until they have a permanent... Um, they have a permanent plan on the schooling, the, the custody and all that. She's like, until all that is settled, we're going to just pretend they're basically still just pretending that they're a family and what I mean, and they are, they're still a family. It's just, they're not together anymore. It seems like this divorce is pretty amicable based off of that. And, um, Stacy did say she's trying to keep it that way. We also do find out um, in another scene a little bit more about all of that, too. But 
one thing is they both are seeing other people too. So they, neither of them have desire to get back together. So the divorce is going to happen clearly. And cause I was even wondering like, okay, you're doing this, but it's going to be on the show. So she's probably going to find out that way. But maybe the idea is about time the show airs, the divorce is final. I'm assuming that's how they're doing it. Anyway. Okay. So then we have um, Kiana. Eh, eh, eh. I'm so glad they made her full time. I loved her last season. The fashions were fashioning. And the way she got rid of Sesame Street, I'm glad. Because go away with me with this. And also, too, based off of the previews for the season, I don't think the... Other new girls are the only ones that have smoke for Ashley. And honestly, it has been eight seasons overdue about, she, about you know, um, Ashley getting her comeuppance on how messy she has been throughout the years. So the only person I think that has last stepped to Ashley was Robin before she switched up. So, yeah, it's about time. Oh, and Katie Ross. I think they were the only ones. So there's that. But anyway, um, and also Karen will always get her together, but it's not as it's not quite the same. Anyway, <clears throat> so but Kiana um shows up at Karen's with the cake, um, and she again she looks amazing. Um, we find out that that whole entire aftermath of Sesame Street and um. G and that G and A event brought them closer, and then we also find out that Kiana has a man. Kiana, Kiana's got a man at home. It's got a man. Um, she's got a man. Uh, <laughs> so she's dating um this guy named um um Wow Greg. And um, they are building a house from the ground up in the suburbs of Baltimore. And we also find out that um, she's, she's looking for this, you know, the ring. Um, and, but we also find out the last time that she has lived with a significant other was her fiance from nine years ago who passed away. So it's taken her clearly some time to move on from that situation and so now she's back out there and now she's, you know, in a super serious relationship. So we're going to get to learn a lot more about Kiana this season. And I'm looking forward to it. But we also find out that Kiana was not invited to Karen's birthday. Which is why we didn't see her the first episode. So it had nothing to do with last minute things or none of that. She was not invited. And then we also find out um, that... Um, so Karen tells her, well, you know, the ladies are doing this GNA event thing. And Kiana makes it clear, like, oh, I have no interest. That that whole entire fiasco was the ghetto. I will never come anywhere near anything has to do with that. Which I don't blame her. I'm sure she's still pretty traumatized by what happened. Because for those who didn't watch last season, the fight got very, very physical. And she had glass, like, she got cut by glass like on her forehead and she has a permanent scar as a result um, from someone who's not even really wasn't even on the show for real. So, um, and it was Ashley's fault, completely Ashley's fault. And Ashley didn't really own up to it much at all. Um, which is why, you know, for the most part, no one really sees it for Ashley. And I mean, I never really have, I have moments where I forget and that I remember she has just done such vile and horrible things. I, I'm like, oh no, I remember why I don't like you. Um, and even towards the end of this episode, she'll, that's one thing that doesn't change about Ashley. No class. Um, not demure, not mindful. Anyway, so then um, we find out um, that... Um, Karen felt like she was being interrogated at the party, mainly by Mia and Jacqueline. And so that's pretty much where this thing ends. Speaking of Ashley, we next see Ashley meets um, Stacy at her place to go hiking together. And Stacy, 
I think as, towards the end of this episode, you realize, um, I think you already realize that Ashley's not your friend. But, um, yeah. But you, you, you don't know until you know, right? But anyway, Stace, um, Ashley is at her place, and we find out um, Ashley just being nosy, asking all these questions, just being messy. And we find out that um, Stacy doesn't know who cuts, cuts their grass. Because the money with her is not funny. I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe in um, Ashley's case, she's just so used to her man having the money, not really her. I don't know. But, you know, when you, when you got the coin, you don't need to know that, I guess, right? Anyway, so then we also find out, she also does tell Ashley that her ex-husband still lives with her. And Ashley has the audacity, and I mean the unmitigated goal to judge her about that. When I'm like, girl, your divorce isn't even a real divorce. No one believes it. And you still haven't even got this divorce yet. Honestly, I feel like Stacy's going to get her divorce before um, Ashley does. That's the wild thing. So it's just kind of like, girl, sit back. Anyway... And then they do start, they do actually have an interesting conversation where they talk about race and how, um, you know, they are raising their children since both their children are biracial. And honestly, if, if Ashley was a genuine person, this would be great. But like, you can't trust Ashley. That's the problem. Um, cause I wanted to like this scene, but I just, you always have to have your good eye on Ashley. You can't, she cannot be trusted. Um, but it was interesting to hear them talk about their experiences as, you know, them identifying, you know, when, when it comes to their kids and how to teach your kids culture, because, um, I'll, I'll go more from Stacy's standpoint. Stacy is coming from the background where she's from Detroit and so, you know, that's blackity, blackity, black, black, black. And, you know, now she's in this world, like her daughter's in this world where her daughter is very, very engrossed in German culture because her ex-husband's very German and very proud of it. But she also wants her daughter to feel the same way about being a black girl. And, um... I, I, I like seeing this because as someone who I'm not biracial, I'm a black woman. Um, you don't really get to see these kind of conversations very often. At least I never have because I just most of my friends who are a mixed, they identify as black. And I've just never really questioned it or I had any follow up behind that. So it was interesting to just see how, you know, how parents would view that and how to navigate that. And even at one point in time when I was dating and really, really into like ser being in relationships, because a couple of guys I've dated where it's gotten serious, there was, you know, there could have been that idea of us having, getting married and having kids and they would have been biracial. But I guess for me, I just never thought any differently. Like, oh no, they're black. <laughs> That's just how, I was, you know, but I also live in an area and environment where is diverse enough where that wouldn't even be questioned, I guess. You know what I mean? So, there's that. Anyway, so then we find out that um, Stacy is actually dating someone right now. And the guy's name's TJ. He is cute. But apparently, he is a very devout Christian who wants to save. They want He wants to save until they get married. So, they're not doing any of the things. And classless Ashley is just being so weird about it. Like, oh my God. I'm like, girl, grow up. <laughs> I mean, not, I mean, it's not your relationship. Some people can do that. I, I mean, similar to Ashley, I'm not sure if I could, but maybe if it was the right person, maybe I could. I don't know. But at the end of the day, it's just like, girl, um, yeah. Honestly, I probably would like this scene if she met up with someone else that wasn't Ashley. But anyway, we learned more about Stacy, so there's that. <laughs> so next, we have Karen. Um, she goes to meet Giselle at her house using her using the car service, and then um, Giselle's making cookies for um, 
you know, Karen, that's a callback because Giselle is known for making, you know, her cookies. And we, we found out from season one when um, the show was not supposed to be the Real Housewives of Potomac. It was supposed to be like an etiquette show. And um, Giselle then asked about um, the party, how she felt about the party. And Karen states obvious. She's like, I feel like I was being interrogated. Um, and then that was, and then Giselle's like, okay. And then the subject does come up about, um, Wendy and because Giselle mentions, I met up with Wendy. We cleared the air. I think we're in a much better place. And she describes to Karen what happened there. And they definitely are in a better place than where they were. Cause before they weren't even talking to each other. Cause so this is a step, um, a step. And then from there, um, Giselle asks Karen about Jacqueline and Karen straight up says Jacqueline's on timeout. She did not like, so remember earlier on why I said that one of the housewives, um, Karen had a problem with what she said because, you know, there was a little bit of talk at the party about her, situ about Karen's situation with the DUI and everything. And Jacqueline's like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna not judge and just wait till things come out. And Karen didn't like that when she heard that. And because she thinks that Jacqueline's being, wasn't being a friend and being fake, according to Karen. And then after that, then we basically get a shade off where they're just taking turns shading each other and their confessionals about all the things. Because we find out that Karen has an event that is honoring her. Um, and it's actually the same day as Giselle's uh, GNA event that um, they invited the, all the ladies to at Karen's party. So all the ladies knew about this event at Karen's party. But then Karen's like, yeah, my um, honoring event, I think it's the same day. And then Giselle's like, do you know what time it is? And Karen's like, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. You know, I just had so much going on. I don't know what time it is. Karen did all this on purpose, and I love it. I love it. I, I'm just like, yes. Um, but this is where I kind of feel bad, and the only reason why I kind of feel bad, this GNA event is just, it's not a regular GNA event. It's actually for the Brain, um, Brain Tumor Society to help raise awareness and funds for brain tumors because Giselle lost her dad. As this was filming, this was like only like three or four months, I think four months after he passed away. So it wasn't that long. So this event isn't really about GNA at all. It's about her dad. Um, and so it's kind of messed up that Karen of all people did it because Karen has made a big deal about her parents passing away. She's even used that as an excuse to why the DUI happened. But yet, he did that. But at the same time, Giselle's very vile and nasty behavior throughout the years. And honestly, towards the end of this episode, the way she reacted, the, that, because the thing is, leading up to this episode and even last episode, we're thinking, oh, Giselle is, you know, going to be how she was season one. That mean girl is going to go away. Child, as soon as there is a little bit of a wrench in the program, that mean, girl, that mean girl came right back. But anyway. So, um. They basically are shading each other because Giselle's like, she knew about this event months ago. And according to Giselle, she wasn't on the, um, Karen wasn't on the flyer originally. So the people must have backed out that was supposed to be originally honored. And now she's being honored. And then, um, fast forward though, it's the next day at 6 a.m. Karen sends this group chat about what time her event is and for everyone to attend both events. They're at the same time. And they're not close to each other either. They're like 25 minutes away from each other. 
And this is in D.C., by the way. So there, this is D.C. traffic they had to go to between two. Yeah, because this neither of these events were in Potomac. They're in, like, D.C. Yeah. And so all the ladies react. Um, <laughs> Stacy's calling the thing a thing. She's like, Karen is being messy, but I guess this is what we're going to do. So, you know. So Stacy's plan on going to Karen's. And then Wendy's like, yeah, I'm going to Karen's. Like, she was already going to go to Karen's. Um, and um, I forgot who. Oh, Mia reacted in a shady way towards Karen. She's like, well, she clearly needs attention. So that's what we're going to do there. But you know Mia has a love-hate relationship with, like, um, Karen, right? So there's that. So it is the time of the GNA event, and we find out. Um, well, for one, I don't know if we knew this, or I don't remember if it was discussed or not. Um, it, it was mentioned that Giselle's dad passed away from the brain tumor, but he only discovered he had the brain tumor 12 days before he passed away. So... Um, this event is also to create awareness to, you know, if he would have gotten it checked, gotten things checked out earlier, he would have been still alive, basically. And, but anyway, Giselle's mad, mad at all of the women because it's very clear that none of them are showing up, like hardly any of them. Yeah. And so Ashley's there because it's, Ashley's event too, you know, they're, they're, it's their co event. And, um, yeah. Ashley's like, yeah, I feel like this was intentional, Karen, to do that, which I think it was too. I think Karen was being messy. I think she wanted to get Giselle back. Um, even though Karen will, you know, pretend she didn't know, we know she did that on purpose. Um, and she kind she kind of may have known that she did on purpose, like later on that evening, that she's like, "It's not my fault. All the women showed up in my event. Clearly, they like me more than you." And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> and so anyway, we do we then do see pretty much most of the ladies are on their way to Karen's event, and but Vivian, Karen's friend, is actually Giselle's event. And um, Stacy is talking to the rest of the ladies in the Sprinter van. It's um, and this with um, oh, Jazzy's um, driver because they're they're in Jazzy Sprinter um with the driver, and she's like, this is way messy that she even did this, but you know, because they're talking about the the um group group text and but Wendy's like. I mean, I was just going to go to, I was going to go to Karen's anyway. <laughs> you know, and same thing with, and Kiana already said from the beginning she wasn't going to that G&A event, so there was that. So you already knew them two didn't feel a way about any of it. Whereas the rest of the ladies are trying to figure out what to do, because it's just kind of like, eek. And also, too, um, Jazzy then calls Ashley to state like, hey, we're going to try to make it to the GNA event at 8, 8 p.m. And well, at first they said 830 and um, Ashley's like, no, please try to make it by like eight um, if you can. But really, one thing that we forgot, too, was when this group text happened right after the group text happened, Giselle did send a message saying like, hey, just go to Karen's event. Don't even bother. Um, so you knew in the group text that Giselle was pissed and she was at first was really mad at Karen for doing that. But also too, it, it, it was rude because Giselle did invite all of them before Karen invited them. Karen invited them that day. They just decided to go with Karen's instead. That's literally what happened. Um, so etiquette wise, it was kind of rude, but yeah, um, again, I'm sighing it because I feel like if the shoes were reversed, and I feel like there has been a similar situation on this show, Giselle would have done the same thing to Karen. 
Like Giselle is known to be doing the, these kind of things. So yeah. Anyway. Um, so the ladies are still trying to figure out how to make it work. And Wendy's trying to tell them with the DC traffic. And do you know how far the other event is from where you're at? That's not going to work. So what ended up happening, though, was the ladies who d did decide to go, they ended up getting to the event, walking to the event. They basically did a walkthrough and walked right out and tried to go to the second event. They weren't even there that long. They did like a little bit of a group picture and then walked right out. And Wendy in her confessional, she's like, I'm here to see Karen get an award. I didn't see her get it yet, so I'm staying. <laughs> I'm just like, yep. You know? And she's like, the rest of the ladies, them trying to go over there, man, I would just take the law, take the L and just go to the one event and call it good. Because it's going to, like, you could tell Wendy knew. Wendy knew where, how this was going. So she was like, I'm not even going to try it. I'm going to go to the one event and call it good. Um, and then also we see that Jacqueline is actually also at Giselle's event as well. And Jacqueline is like, talking to Giselle and she finds out from Giselle that, you know, Karen feels a way about her. And she's like, well, I mean, it's the truth. I don't know what you want me to say, what you want me to do. But also this whole entire time, Giselle is actually seriously really, really pissed. Um, <clears throat> and then we do see the event go down where Giselle and the um, brain tumor society, they have the speech, they do the speech already. And then after that, Mia, Jazzy, and Stacy, they show up. And they show up at 804. And Giselle is furious and has them escorted out by security like immediately. And in front of everyone, just embarrasses them in front of everybody. And um, you know. Giselle's like, no, you can't stay here. You're rude. This is rude that you would show up, yada, 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 yada. And I'm sorry, but like, it's a, the thing that gets me is this is a charity event. So if they would have showed up at the, later on, as long as they're like contributing to the charity, does it really matter? No. So Giselle was being a mean girl here at this moment. She clearly was being a mean girl. She had, she was, she was, and I get her feelings are hurt, but at the end of the day, you didn't exactly do anything to make friends, you know, throughout the years on this show. So I don't know what she thought she was going to get. Um, so she was pissed. And um, yeah, Giselle kicks them out. And then Ashley's basically doing Giselle's dirty work and making sure they get kicked out. And that's where the episode ends. But child... I don't want to tell you the preview yet, but that preview of what ends up happening afterwards, baby. But this tells me that I I, I get, I, I, man, I, I guess I'm torn. I'm still torn on, on the situation, but it, hey, it's a good episode to me. But at the end of the day, Karen. <laughs> Karen did it on purpose. And also, too, she did it on purpose, but at the end of the day, I'm sorry, Giselle has done this multiple times throughout the years. So she's gotten a taste of her medicine, and she didn't like it. She did not like it, clearly. But anyway, that does conclude the episode, because I'm going to keep repeating myself. But um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl, Sharon, a.k.a. The Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.